Okay, we're going to get started. Um, this is the meeting of the Fall River Commission on Disability Conference Call meeting for March 10th, um, 2010. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may, trans may transmit this meeting through through any medium. Attendees are thereby advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. Okay, I just wanted to check and make sure I read something correctly. I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Roll is, call. Uh, is Catherine Destrums there? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, Cam and Dennis Paselli? Um, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco. Commissioner Lisa Silva. Present. Danny Robillard. Present. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza. Here. Okay, the next item uh, is public public input. Is there any public input? Okay. Um, next, we have the meet, approval of the minutes of the meeting of February 10th. Motion to approve the minutes of February 10th, 2021 of the Floor of the Disability Commission. Okay, second. do I hear a second? I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Um, we need a roll any, call, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I'm sorry, all items... All, all items will be roll call voted, I, and I apologize for that. Um, but is there any discussion of the minutes? Okay, can we have a roll call? Chairman Dennis Baselli? Yes. Vice Chairwoman Debbie Pacheco? Commissioner Lisa Silva? Yes. Commissioner Danny Robillard? Yes. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza? Yes. Okay. Just just for the record, um, the vice chair is absent today because it was a job-related meeting that she had. So, um, just so that we have, you know, just so that there's, uh, uh, just so that that's on record. Um, okay. The next item is um, <clears throat> our guest presenter is Sergeant Kevin Dolan from the Fall River Police Department. Um, we're we're going to be discussing the review and the renewal. Um, of the Fall River Police Detail Disability Parking Enforcement Program that we've had since about 2011. Um, and just so that we're clear for the agenda, um, this is a presentation now and questions and answers, and then when we get to finance section on the agenda, we'll take the vote just so that we're going in order of the agenda. Unless um, there's been a request to take an item out of order, and so far there there, there was none. So I'm going to turn the floor over to Sergeant uh, Kevin Dolan. It's all yours. Okay, good afternoon to everybody. Um, I know last year it was kind of a big hit. Uh, to the uh, any board members that may not be familiar with what uh, my officers do that are uh, specifically assigned to the Handicap Parking Patrol, uh, I'll just kind of uh, give you a quick summary of it. I have two officers that work opposite days off and or opposite shifts so that they don't usually overlap. And they patrol uh, all the parking areas throughout Fall River and even uh, the streets. And they're looking for people who are, who are maybe parking in handicapped spots that don't have a placard or that have an expired placard or people blocking handicap ramps or maybe parking on the crosshatch or any other uh, violations of the uh, laws as they pertain to handicap parking. And what they'll do is they'll wait for up to one hour per uh, violation that they see 
so that they can actually speak to the violator. Uh, a lot of times that will resolve the issue because it, maybe it would be uh, an elderly person that just forgot to put their placard up that day. And in the spirit of the law, you know, that doesn't really merit um, finding somebody. So a lot of times they'll just, it'll be community education at that point. Or sometimes instead of just dropping a ticket off because somebody has an expired placard, they'll wait and they'll uh, explain to them that the placard's expired and that they need to renew it. Or um, they also look, I, I think it was Commissioner Robillard that was looking to um, get some numbers about um, different violations. So they, they do um, misuse of a placard, which is to me the worst offense. They do parking in a handicapped spot without a placard. And they also fine people for, or at least educate them for having hidden numbers. Most of the time, too, the numbers are hidden for a, um, if, if the numbers are hidden, it's usually not for good intention. It's usually they're trying to hide something. So the officers wait around for that. So that's the three basic violations they look for. And like I said, when the, when the uh, violator comes out, they educate them on why they're uh, receiving a ticket or, or uh, like a, they could explain away that, oh, I forgot to, here's my placard and, and uh, you know, I'm sorry. And this way the person uh, doesn't get a fine, but they, they've been educated on uh, remembering to put their placard up. So that's what I have the two officers do. Before I get any further, though, are there any questions on any of that? Okay. Anybody have any questions at this point? I'd like to hear the rest of the presentation and reserve questions after that, unless any other members have questions on this section. I'm all set. Okay. So based on that, that's what the officers do for their eight-hour shift. Like I said, they alternate back and forth between the two of them. So. What I did last year, and I'll do it again this year, is I've selected four uh, reports generated by the officers for, um, like I said, what, what I think is the worst offense, the misuse of a placard where somebody is, uh, is using it to get a uh, premium parking place without a legitimate reason, and uh, most of the time the placard doesn't belong to the offender. So I've got four reports, and I'll, I'll read them. Uh, I've redacted the names of, of the people, of course, and the plate numbers. But uh, this gives you a, a general idea of, of what the officers do. Uh, the first one is from Officer uh, John Riley. On March 2, 2021, at 5.27 p.m., Officer Riley was in the parking lot of Walmart on Quickashan Street, checking vehicles that were parked uh, in the posted handicapped spaces while walking through the parking lot. He observed a female enter the passenger side of a vehicle with mass registration, and it was parked in a posted handicap space. As he approached, he noticed that the brake lights illuminated of the vehicle, and then the reverse lights came on. The vehicle could not back up due to a large amount of pedestrians walking behind it. I was able to get the attention of the operator, who was identified as Jennifer. I asked who the placard belonged to that was hanging from the mirror, and she said that it was her mother's. He asked where her mom was, and she stated home. I asked her where home was, and she stated uh, an address in Bridgewater, Massachusetts. I asked why she was parked here, and she stated that she was picking up her own daughter. So uh, she didn't have a legitimate reason, of course, for parking there. She was cited for misuse of a handicap placard, and she was also given a parking tag for parking in a handicap spot without... Um, without a proper placard. So that's the first report. Any questions on that one? Okay, I'll move on to the second one. Uh, Tuesday, February 2nd of 2021 at 12.45 p.m., Officer David Gouveia was working as the handicapped uh, patrol officer. He was going, also going through the parking lot of Walmart on Quickashan Street, checking the handicapped parking spots for any violations. He saw a certain mass registration attached to a, uh, a Hyundai Kona, color gray, and it was parked in a marked handicap spot. There was a placard hanging from the rearview mirror with an expiration date of August 20th of 2020, 
so approximately six months uh, expired already. He went to his cruiser to verify the expiration of the placard via the uh, computer that we have in our group. As he was checking, he saw a female approach the vehicle and start to load groceries into the vehicle. He approached the female and asked if he could inspect her handicap placard, which the police have a right to do. Uh, as she was retrieving her placard, he asked her if the placard belonged to her, and she stated, no, it's my mom's. He asked if her mom was with her, and she said no. I, uh, he asked her why she was parking in the handicapped spot if her mother is not present, and she said, well, I'm picking up groceries for her. So Officer Govea took possession of the placard, uh, took the offender's driver's license, and uh, cited her, again, for misuse of a handicapped placard, and he also gave her the parking tag for parking in a handicapped spot without a proper handicapped placard. Any questions on that one? You, you know what, Sergeant? I I am going to have a couple of questions, but I guess I want I want to hear you out. Um, I do have some questions, but I, if it's okay, I think I'm going to. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't mind that. I just didn't want anybody to forget a question they have. If I if I'm okay. Reading. Yeah, okay. it, it's a general question. I that okay. that so I don't think it's uh, th I don't think this question is any specific. But if um, I I think this is this is a good format to to check out if anybody has a question about a specific. Uh, incident that that's that's fine okay okay I'll move on to the third report uh, also officer Gouveia on um, for randomly chosen of course they they both do generate just about the same amount of reports uh, Saturday March 6th 2021 officer Gouveia was working uh, handicapped enforcement again and he was walking in the stop and shop parking lot on Mariano Bishop Boulevard. He saw a mass registration attached to a blue Chevy Malibu in a handicap spot. Uh, the vehicle did have a handicap placard displayed hanging from the rearview mirror. However, the placard had expired uh, two months prior on January 12, 2021. So he issued the vehicle a um, parking ticket for an expired handicap placard. He returned to his cruiser and ran a query through the registry of the owner of the placard. The placard um, did come through as expired. Uh, uh, and, and he also noticed that the owner of that placard had a canceled operator's license. The owner of the placard's name was Lewis. He waited for the operator of the vehicle to return to further investigate. A short time later, a female who the officer somehow knew her first name was Joyce, returned to the vehicle alone. He asked her if she had a handicap placard, and she stated, yes, it's hanging in my vehicle. Uh, he asked Joyce if he could inspect the placard, and she asked him why, and he explained that the placard was expired. He then asked her if she had her own placard, and she said, no, this is my husband's. He asked her if she had a valid placard in her name, and she again said no. He asked where her husband was, and she said, she informed Officer Gouveia that he had passed away. So Officer Gouveia issued her the parking ticket and uh, the citation once again for the misuse of a handicapped placard. And he confiscated the placard and turned it into the uh, parking clerk. Any questions on that specific incident? Okay, last incident. Uh, this is December 6th of 2020, Officer John Riley at 11.53 a.m., um, walking through the parking lot of Market Basket on William S. Canning Boulevard to check for uh, handicapped parking violations. I uh, came across a vehicle with Massachusetts registration, and it was parked in the handicapped space. A placard was hanging from the mirror, but it was placed so that he could not see the placard number. But the expiration date showing showed that the placard had expired in 2018. So he immediately issued a parking tag for the expired placard. He turned to his cruiser and he ran the registration and it came back to a uh, 2007 Hyundai and regist registered to a person named Laura from Falmouth, Massachusetts. So he parked his cruiser in an open space where he could watch the vehicle. And at 12.40 p.m., so 50 minutes later, again, this I kept this one because the point is that they do wait around. They don't just... Uh, give them a ticket and leave. Uh, 12.40 p.m., a male and a female approached the vehicle and started to place their items into the car. 
He approached them and asked if the placard belonged to them. The female, identified as Laura, said, no, it was my mom's. And he asked to see the placard and explained that it had expired. She said that she didn't know that. Uh, Officer Riley asked where her mom was, and she stated she wasn't here, and this was the only thing uh, she had to remember her by. Riley asked if her mom had passed away, and she said yes, a few years ago. So the, uh, the placket belongs to a, a woman named Jean who had passed away on January 3rd, 2018. Officer Riley asked who had parked the vehicle, and the uh, woman stated she parked it in the handicapped space. He asked why she parked there, and she didn't offer an explanation. So he gave her the citation once again for uh, misuse of a handicapped placard and uh, parking in a handicapped spot without a proper placard. And I saved this one for last because when he gave her the ticket, she said, I hope you have a Merry Christmas after this. And that was the end of that report. So now that I've read all the reports and explained what the officers do, uh, I'm willing to entertain any questions. I do have some, but I want to know if any other um, commissioners have questions. Mr. Chairman? Sure. Go ahead. Brief, brief, briefly, just a couple of questions. Uh, Sergeant Dolan, thank you very much for your presentation. I just have a couple of questions. I'm familiar with this program. Um, I've been often on the commission uh, at least three times, so I'm fairly familiar with it. but. Uh, you did bring up a couple of things that piqued my mind. The the uh, the violation for misuse is that a five hundred dollar ticket plus the regular two hundred dollar violation? Uh, yes, sir, it is. It's it's actually five hundred and five dollars, and that goes on a citation, the same kind of a citation that people get for a traffic violation, and then the. Two hundred dollars goes on a parking ticket. So yeah, the okay. total is one hundred and five dollars altogether. Now, when when the placards are confiscated, uh, if I heard you correctly, you said it was uh, brought back to the parking court. That would be Mrs. Ferreira. Is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. Uh, is, is that a change in policy, sir? I think uh, some years back, and I'm not saying this is, I, I'm just going from memory right now, so I'm not assuming anything. I thought that when a, a placard was confiscated, that it went to the possession of the police department. Well, yes, we, we, I mean, Officer Gouveia takes possession of it and brings it in here to me, and I, I make a... Um, a package that I end up sending over to the traffic clerk at City Hall. And what I, I'm glad you reminded me, what I failed to mention is when we do charge somebody with misuse of a handicapped spot, a report is generated by the officer and we send that to the uh, medical affairs office of the RMV up in Boston, Massachusetts. The reason why we actually give the placard to the traffic division now is basically to shorten the time because some, sometimes it's a genuine mistake that the placard is used and if we send that placard to the RMV in Boston um, and the, the clerk, the traffic clerk determines that it was, a, uh, you know, an honest mistake or, or, or it was given in error, the person can get the placard back within a few days as opposed to waiting for it to get mailed back from Boston. When the person is found responsible for it, then the, it's my understanding the traffic clerk either destroys that placard or ships it up to Boston so that it can it can stay in the proper hands. Okay, now, uh, on, a, on a misuse violation, uh, if it's found to be valid, is it not correct that there's also a surcharge on insurance? Uh, I honestly don't know that answer because I'm only on the fining side of it. Okay, a and is Mrs. Ferreira, to your knowledge, uh, the the officer that's conducting uh, the misuse hearings as well as the other violation hearings when yes. requested? Yes, sir. So she does them both. And do you, do either you or one of the officers uh, that are currently serving in this role, uh, working for the commission, 
Does somebody attend those hearings? Uh, they do on occasion. If Ms. Ferreira um, has some questions, uh, you know, she, she knows ahead of time when they're scheduled, we will send the officer that gave that particular uh, fine and tag to, uh, to the hearing. But uh, as a general rule, uh, the police officer doesn't attend every hearing. Okay. Um, uh, I, I was looking at, at the latest MOU that I could find between the Four River Disability Commission and the Four River Police Department. Uh, generally, I find it uh, to be acceptable. However, it does date back to 2016. I'd like to see an updated MOU. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe we'd have a few tweaks on it. Maybe that's something that a couple of commissioners with the chairman and yourself uh, could work on at some point. Uh, I, I will say this, and I'm just speaking for myself, and this will be my last comment at this point. Uh, I, I do believe that having the officers wait around at one hour per stop is far too long, okay? And, and generally, I'm not saying in all cases that education isn't necessary, but in general, it's been illegal to park in a handicapped parking uh, space for a long, long time. And frankly, if people don't know that it's illegal by now, maybe they shouldn't be driving a vehicle. That's my own personal opinion. So I look forward <clears throat> to working with you. I have some other issues uh, to discuss at a later time, uh, but I thank you for your service. I thank uh, the two officers for their service, and I yield for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Sergeant Dolan, I'm just wondering, <clears throat> I, I, guess I, I guess I was under the impression, and as I said, this program goes back to 2011. We've had a number of meetings with um, Mrs. Ferreira and a number of meetings with your predecessors. I guess I was always under the impression that um, the police officers were present at all of the hearings. That, are you saying that's not the case? No, that's that's not the case, sir. Okay, I, I'm just. I, it's kind of news to me, because I thought that that's what the. Um, I guess that's that was something that we had discussed in a meeting. And this, I I don't believe you were, um, you weren't the person in charge at that time. I do remember that, but I but I know Mrs. Ferrero was present at the meeting and. I was under the impression that that was the agreement we all reached, that, that a police officer, either yourself or, or, or the police officer, would be present at all hearings. Um, and I'm wondering if there's a way that that could be clarified for future discussion. Well, I can, um, if I were to compare it to the civil citation hearings that, you know, when we give somebody a regular citation, we don't go to the initial hearing. You know, the police officers don't go to that initial hearing either. If, if there's a further need for maybe a continuance or the person disagrees with the disposition, the police officer would go to the second hearing, uh, again, when dealing with a regular citation. So, I, I mean, I'm only speculating because it's, since I've been here, um, the officers don't go unless there is a specific need for them or there's a question that arises. Or um, in the case of some of them that have been pretty controversial, uh, Ms. Ferreira wants to continue it and have the police officer show up. In those cases, uh, they do show up to it. Okay, so there is a process by which from time to time you would be asked to come in and, or, or your officers would be, uh, would be asked to come in. Um, yes, sir. Okay. Are there any other questions for Sergeant Dolan? Um, I read four very interesting interactions. No more questions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of, I mean, <clears throat> I, I, I share the frustration I think the commissioner mentioned about, um, Commissioner Robillard mentioned about these parking laws have been in, has been in, you know, have been in, 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 um, 
in effect for a very, very long period of time. I mean, even even before I moved back to Fall River in 2009, um, um, and and I I get. I guess I get frustrated, even though I'm, I admit I'm not. The, I don't have to worry about driving, but I do get frustrated at the at how much education are we supposed to be doing? Um, <clears throat> you know, because because this is not new stuff, and, and 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 it's my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that a lot of the stuff is written on the back of people's placards. Is that is that the case? I mean, that was I had somebody read me a back of a placard once and it seemed like all the relevant information was there yes correct uh maybe i made it sound like they're they're not finding uh they're not finding somebody who with without a disability that's just parking there like they don't give them a break this is for to make sure that it wasn't uh you know like i said an elderly person that just forgot to hang her placard Mm -hmm. Um, people aren't getting away with it. It's not just uh, that I I didn't mean that with the education or someone who who, uh, forgot to because the um, hiding the uh, your picture sometimes that'll slip down. So they didn't you know what I mean? They they covered the numbers by mistake. It's not uh, where some somebody that's actually breaking the law is getting away with it. So when I said education, I mean they're verifying, how's that, maybe verifying that it was a real infraction instead of uh, a mistake. I mean, obviously it's easier for a police officer to wait around for up to an hour. Uh, up to is the, the key word there. It doesn't always happen. Okay. Um, so that they can say, okay, you know, you, you covered, you, you hit the expiration date by mistake, Make sure next time you hang the placard up that you have the uh, the numbers and the expiration date exposed so the officer can check them. That's what I meant by educating the public. They're not letting people get away with it. Where, where just um, I remember a controversy a while back about the displaying of the pictures so that you know people were afraid that members of the public would see somebody's picture and. I don't know. <clears throat> there, were, there was kind of a fear of that. So, I, where's the picture placed on the placard? Well, now, now they come with a sleeve. That, that's what I'm saying. You can slide the sleeve to hide your picture, but the okay. number and the expiration date have to be visible. Okay. It's just in the it's in the middle of the placard. So you you slide the sleeve over your picture. Mr. Chairman. If I could just add to something you're saying in support of a couple of the points you made. Uh, number one, placards have had pictures for, for a long period of time. I don't know how long, but I have a placard uh, to be transported in a passenger vehicle, even though I'll never be able to drive. Uh, and I've always had my picture on it. That's number one. Number two, placards used to be indefinite. They now expire like a license, okay? And number three, all of the do's and don'ts are located clearly on the back of a placard. So someone can't say they didn't know. I believe waiting around for up to an hour is far too long. It's my own personal opinion. As I say, these laws have been in effect for a long time. Uh, I have Sergeant Bowen. Um, uh, my, my concerns with this program have nothing to do with the Fall River Police Department, okay? There are other areas of the program that are outside the control of the police department where my concerns come in. So when you hear me make these statements and, and take votes in such a fashion, I just want you to be clear that my vote and my comments today have nothing to do uh, with the Fall River Police Department. Thank you very much. I yield. Anybody have any other questions for Sergeant Dolan? Okay. Um, we're going to we're going to vote on this when when we get to the. Um, 
the finance section of our agenda. We'll take the formal vote then so that we stay in order of the agenda. Um, and <clears throat> These, are, these meetings are open to the public, Sergeant, so you're, you're perfectly welcome to hang around until um, when we get to that item of the agenda. Uh, Mr. But, Chairman? Yes. Could I make, I don't know if I need this in the form of a motion, but that uh, we, we work at uh, revising uh, the MOU after today's meeting once we've taken a vote? Yeah, we could. So we, we need this. Do we need this in the form of a motion? Um, why don't Why don't you go ahead and make the motion? Uh, okay, I, I'd like to make a motion that the Fall River Disability Commission uh, consider revising uh, the MOU between the Fall River Police Department and the Fall River Disability Commission uh, within the next sixty days. Okay, do I hear a second to that? Okay, let me just repeat to everybody that um, if, you, if you want to, you have to press star six to unmute yourself. So if anybody wants to second the motion, it's star six to unmute yourself. So do I hear a second to that? Okay. Um, the motion is denied. Move the order of business. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so next we're going to go on to um, updates. Do we have any ADA updates? <clears throat> I can tell you that we had a very interesting work group meeting with audible pedestrian signals. Um, I wasn't sure whether, we, I was never sure whether the police department needed to be in on that or not, but we had a, an interesting presentation from a national <clears throat> um, expert on audible pedestrian signals for blind and visually impaired traffic signals. Um, and you can, uh, you, you can, I do have a recording of that if anyone wants to hear it, um, just let me know, and I can, I can give you the proper dial-in number to hear the recording, or I can also send you the, um, the meeting, the workgroup meeting presentation itself, which, which also has access, uh, access to the recording. So, and that was on February 24th. Um, um, the workgroup is very concerned about safety. Um, safety in streets and sidewalks, curb cuts being on one side of the street and not on another, for example, um, the lack of audible pedestrian signals for blind persons, safe street crossings. Those are the issues that we're kind of concerned about right now. So we know of one audible pedestrian signal in the city. That's, and uh, I forgot where that was. Um, I don't remember where that was. I forgot was. to. I'm yeah. trying to think of just um, saying it. <clears throat> but um, but we did have a very good meeting with John Perry and um, uh, the, the the national expert B Z Benson, national expert on audible pedestrian signals, safety signals. So we'll keep you posted on that because there's talk about renovating some lights and stuff and um, and a possibility of having some more put in. Um, so we're going to be having a follow-up with John Perry on uh, March 31st. So that's an ADA update. I don't know. Um, I did I did send an agenda and a notice to Tammy Maltino. I don't know if she's on the call, if she had any updates. Um, because the other thing is <clears throat> I would like to have our work group do a, an update on how the ADA improvement grant is being implemented at City Hall. I think we're due for an update um, to see how that's going um, because there were a number of things such as braille signage and stuff like that that we're concerned about. So uh, we'll be working with the work group to get an update on that and bring it back to the full commission. And uh, Vice Chair is not 
here today, so there will be no update on policy. So that brings me to finance um, and a formal uh, motion to renew the Disability Parking Police Detail Program for the coming year, for the upcoming year. So I, do I need, a, I need a motion on that? I'll make the motion to renew the uh, Disability Parking Enforcement Police Detail Program. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a second to that? Second for discussion and a vote. Okay. Um, sorry. Um, okay, is there a discussion? Are there any further discussion? Roll call, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I was just going to do it one more time, but okay, roll call. Chairman Dennis Paselli? Yes. Commissioner Lisa Silva? Yes. Commissioner Danny Robillard? No. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Um, once again, <clears throat> um, I, I want to thank Sergeant Kevin Dolan um, for for appearing before us. And um, there's going to be some some slight changes just in in the coming year in in our method of communication. Because, um, uh, for example, whenever the commission allocates for something, I want the police officers who are working hard on our behalf to know exactly what's happening in the commission. For example, um, I've shared with them the minutes when we allocated money for share, um, when we allocated money for uh, starting the scholarship program, and when we did the audible local ledger. Um, I want them to know exactly where their hard work is going. I think that's that's important. So I'm going to be um, improving communications in the coming year um, <clears throat> with Sergeant Dolan and the officers. Um, and, and this is probably going to be done through the outreach work group. So the outreach work group, I have a little extra assignment for you guys. We're going to be um, meeting a few times with, with Sergeant Dolan. And if he wants to bring in officers, that will be left totally, totally to his discretion. Okay, um, anything on outreach? Hello. Oh, hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, we're still, yeah, going, Lisa. We're still ahead, Lisa. going over numbers um, with the schools for the scholarship yep. program, just trying to figure out how many graduating students between all three high schools so that we can go from there. Okay. And that's it regarding that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that at the April meeting we can have definite or as close to definite so that we can make some motions because it, it, it is coming up on the end of the school year. Well, it's, it'll be April, but I'm hoping that we can make some specific motions about how to allocate the 32000 among the schools. So we'll be working on that at our next out, outreach meeting, and then we'll have specific um, we'll have specific motions ready for the next meeting, which will be on April 14th. Um, thank you very much, Commissioner Lisa. Um, any old business? Okay, new business. I just want to make everybody aware I sent out this morning. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be an interesting forum by Jeff Dugan and the Massachusetts Office on Disability on Wednesday, April 14th. I know that's our next meeting, but ours is not till 2 o'clock. This is from 11.30 to 12.30. This is, I guess, a series that they're doing, but one of the items that might be of interest to all of us is outdoor dining because we want to make sure that um, despite the pandemic and all, and even with the outdoor dining, outdoor dining that proper accessibility um, rules are being followed. So that will come up. That will be part of the webinar 
that's going to take place and um, I, I, I'll resend that again for people, but if you, you, there is a registration, but there's no charge. And what will happen once you register is you'll get a Zoom invitation um, to this meet, to this uh, forum on Wednesday, April 14th. So, any other new business? Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second that. Okay, we need a roll call on that. Chairman Dennis Baselli? Yes. Commissioner Lisa Silva? Yes. Commissioner Danny Robillard? Yes. Commissioner Ann O'Neill Souza? Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. <laughs>